problem is all inside your head, she said to me. The answer is easy if you take it logically. I'd like to help you in your struggle to be free. There must be 50 ways to leave your lover. Slip out the back, Jack. Make a new plan, stay. You don't need to be coin Roy. Just keep yourself free. I'm on the bus, cause you don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the TV and get yourself free. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug, and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you in advance for liking and subscribing to my channel. Your support allows me to continue doing these reviews, so thanks. When I got my Grail fountain pen for my 65th birthday, a viewer pointed me to a new Hongdian Model 960 that has some vague resemblances to the Pelican M800. So I bought one to find out. I thought that like other pens I've ordered from China, like the Pen BBS 348 I've been waiting for since March 14th, it would take months to get here, but it arrived in 14 days. And here it is. Yes, it does look vaguely like the Pelican M800, but that's where all the similarities stop. The pen isn't even close, so there really isn't any point in doing a head-to-head -head comparison. But the Hongdian 960 has some nice points, and it has also given me some challenges, as you will see right now. <laughs> So, NCPD, that's new, Chinese Pen Day. And I got this package, and I have no idea what's in it, because my tracking still says this is in China. And I got a bunch of things that are still in China. I haven't even made Canada yet, but this one arrived in my mailbox today, and we're going to open it up with my new Kershaw Leak. And there we have our pen sleeve. And this will be a surprise to me because I don't know which one this is going to be. Well, I think I've got an idea now. Yep. Yeah. There it is. This is a Hongdian 960. And I got this because a viewer suggested I take a look at this new model from Hongdian and I had just got my Pelican M800 just last week or a couple weeks ago I guess when I saw this or was informed of this and thought they looked very similar certainly there are styling suggestions from Hongdian that suggest the Pelican this of course is not a piston filler a good size nib, marked F, nice upscale Hongdian converter, and some lovely shimmer and sparkle to that. We'll clean this out and give it a try. Hongdian 960. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Overall, this is a very attractive pen. This blue turned acrylic in a cracked ice style has some lovely sparkle to it, but it's nowhere near the spectacular acrylic of the Galaxy in this Moonman M800. The blue in the 960 is also a bit muted and slightly more in the purple range. From the top, we see the main similarity to the Pelican M800, the cap finial. The two-step gold metal finial has what you might say is a tip of the cap. Pardon the pun. <laughs> what pun? Shut up, he thinks he's witty. To the Pelican finial. The 960 is straight-edged and flat-topped, whereas the Pelican has a domed top and a tapering step. The Hongdian 960's flat top has a laser-etched Hongdian logo of a dove 
with world peace written below it, surrounded by laurel leaves and then the word Hongdian. Then we have two steps down to a gold medal ring that holds the clip in place. The clip doesn't resemble the pelican at all, but it is a nice tapering design, but it's very stiff to the point of making it almost impossible to use. The cap tapers up in a really nice shaped curve to a gold metal band that goes all the way to the end of the cap. The cap band has two grooves which frame the name Hongdian on one side and 960 on the other stamped into it. The barrel has a very slight 0.5 millimeter taper down to a gold ring which separates the barrel from the black plastic faux blind cap. This of course is not a piston filler but a cartridge converter pen. The cap unscrews with one and about a quarter turn to reveal a section of the same acrylic material that has a slight taper to it and a small flare right there towards a gold ring and the number six size steel nib which is two-toned and a black plastic feed. The section is separated from the barrel by a thin gold ring which is actually part of the nozzle and threads of the section. Let's look closely at this nib. The chrome part of the nib has some nice scroll work on it and then it says 1997 has the Hongdian logo and Lan Xian Li Shui Zhe Xiang if my Chinese is uh, correct, which it usually isn't, and an F for fine. The text is different again from other Hongdian pens I reviewed, but this is the first Hongdian number no. 6 size nib I've ever seen. But this is clearly the parent company of the brand Hongdian, which is the Zhejiang Lishui Lanxian Pen Manufacturing Company, which was founded in 1997 and was an OEM manufacturer of other pen brand names from that time until now when it has created its own brand. Again, this isn't unlike uh, other companies like Opus 88 in Taiwan. The nib and feet are part of a nib assembly that unscrews to be replaced, which is a really good thing because I had some big issues with this nib out of the box, as you will see. The section unscrews to reveal an included cartridge converter, which is very upscale and branded Hongdian. It has a reinforced nipple and can be disassembled. The pen also accepts Parker, Lamy, and Pen BBS standards, so it will take a Pen BBS converter along with Lamy long cartridges, Parker short and long cartridges. Inside of the cap shows a milled edge uh, right about there that's supposed to act as a cap seal. There is no cap liner. But as you'll see, when I cap the pen, you might be able to see where that ledge is milled into the inside of the cap and where the section ends up. There's about two millimeter gap right there. The cap doesn't post for any practical purposes, like most dual-fold style fountain pens, like the Jinhao Centennial Moonman 600S or the Wingsung 670. It must be difficult to get the proportions right or something. Uh, how does Pelican do it? The posting of the M800 is sublime. Look at that. Posts beautifully and doesn't unbalance the pen. Beautiful length, both posted and unposted. And it seems to be a tough thing for other pen manufacturers to do. Unposted, the pen is very comfortable and balanced and, and just long enough in the hand for me. The section is a good size and girth and that little flare at the end of the section is a nice addition. Uh, this is a very comfortable pen to write with at length. I bought this pen on eBay from the seller Sally of Easy Buy. Sally also has an Etsy shop by the same name, Easy Buy. I paid $28.91 US, including $2 shipping, and the pen has since dropped in price to $26.91, including the shipping. It is available in two nib sizes, EF and F, 
and in five colors, orange, black, dark red, dark blue, and dark green. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Here is the Hongdian 960 with a Pelican M800, a Moonman M600S, a Jinhao Centennial, and a Kaigaloo 316. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And you see that the only one in this group that does a good job of posting is the Pelican M800. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Hongdian nine sixty, and that has a fine steel number six nib. Now, before I go any further with the writing sample. I have to tell you the issues I've had with this nib. It came to me out of the packing material like this. Notice how wide the tines are apart from each other? The nib almost looks sprung. I inked the pen anyway and did a writing sample. And here's the writing sample. It was not only very wet, but also one of the scratchiest nibs I've experienced lately. The tines didn't look to be out of alignment. So I decided to attempt to make it less wet by scissoring the tines. I've made that term up. Uh, I don't know whether it's accurate or not. It's, uh, it's the way I describe it. It's a technique I saw Brian Goulet demonstrate on one of his videos. It's where you take the tines and purposely misalign them by passing them over and under each other and pressing them together. Uh, this will close the gap between the tines and of course it'll misalign the tines themselves and you have to realign them again. I did this a few times, uh, each time scissoring the tines in an opposite direction, over and under and under and over. I worked on the nib for about an hour until I got the wetness uh, where I wanted it to be. Um, so it was a lot less gushy than this, but it was still very, very scratchy. But I worked on the nib first with some 8,000 grit uh, micro mesh and then with some 12,000 grit micro mesh until I got it relatively smooth. I wrote with the pen for several days after that and I keep my micro mesh handy and tweak it as I wrote in my journal. And I must say I'm surprised at the results. I thought I'd have to throw this nib away but it has surprised me in that it has almost a pen BBS fine mini food a character to it. It must have been an accident. I don't know. Let's get back to our writing sample. Let's check the wetness now. This pen is still extremely wet. And, but it isn't as much of a fire hose as it was. And the ink, which is Iro Shizuku Asagao, um, is a very nicely behaved uh, lubricating ink. All of the Orochizukus that I have are wonderfully well behaved and nicely lubricating inks. And here are some close matches to Asagal from Inkswatch.com. As to line variation, this is a very stiff nib and I don't want to push it uh, anymore because uh, that will spread the tines out again and it's already wet enough for me but I'm getting some subtle line variation um, just from the nib itself. It's not a mini fude, but I'm getting a slightly thicker line in the horizontal direction than I am getting in the vertical direction. And the pen is nicely smooth now with a bit of feedback. And this line is 0.5 millimeters. 
which is a Western fine and a Japanese uh, fine more to medium. And for our quote, and some reverse writing. It is very scratchy, but you do get a much thinner line. And some quick writing. No issues at all. Very, very wet and keeps up very nicely. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I really like the styling and the looks of this pen. Capped, it is just about the same size as this Jinhao Centennial. But rather than being straight sided and flat topped, it has some very pelican like curves to it on the cap and the barrel. And of course that two stepped finial, which is very pretty. Remember, it may look similar to a pelican, but it's not. Run! It's Godzilla! It looks like Godzilla, but due to international copyright laws, it's not. Still, we should run like it is Godzilla! Though it isn't. Ah! Unposted, the pen is very comfortable in my hand and has a nice balance and a nicely shaped and sized section and smooth cap threads. I like the upscale quality converter supplied with the pen and the fact that it will take Parker Long, Short and Lamy cartridges as well as accept a pen BBS converter. I like the large two-toned number six size steel nib. This pen would look awful with a number five Hongdian steel nib, I think. Kind of like how the Twisby Draco looks with its undersized nib. What I don't like so much is the lack of deep posting. I know all of the Duofold clones from the Moonman M600S and the Kaigalu 316 to the Jinhao Centennial and the Wingsung 670. None of them post well, if at all. But my Pelican M800 posts beautifully. Is it really that difficult to do? This pen would be freaking amazing if you could post it as deeply and securely and well balanced as the Pelican. But no. It would probably cost a few hundred dollars, I guess. I don't know. I'm no engineer. Uh, but can't you guys just put the end of this pen in a big pencil sharpener and taper it a bit? Just saying. Good day, Ms. Bellum. How is every little thing? Thing? <laughs> you pencil go snap. Here, let me help you with that. <laughs> The pen is okay, as I said, unposted. Uh, it's just on the border of becoming too small. I have medium hands, so someone with larger hands would find this pen too short. and posted it is ridiculously long and unbalanced. I wish the pen came with a medium option and I wish the clip weren't almost impossible to use 
But my biggest issue with the pen was the nib and how it came to me in almost sprung condition. If I didn't have the skills I learned over the last couple of years of dealing with crappy nibs, I'd have to return this pen or throw it out. As it is, I spend about an hour fiddling with this nib to get it to write. And as it is, I'm now delighted with it. Somewhere in my scissoring, twisting, bending, and meshing, I hit upon a sweet spot that gave the pen uh, that had no character and gushed like a fire hose and was scratchy as a wool suit. It gave it a whole new personality. I'd say skill was involved, but it could have easily turned into a bent POS. It is a well-priced pen that comes in a variety of really cool colors. If you get lucky and get a nib that works well, it's an awesome buy. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.